Hey guys, this is Trace Finicaro, founder of QZ Industries, author of QZ Tray. This is the second of a series of signing tutorials that we're creating. Uh, this one is for JavaScript. Uh, this is a popular uh, language for signing, especially because you don't have to go all the way to the server and back to get your uh, your valid signature. So. This tutorial, we actually are not going to be requiring a web server at all. We're going to be doing it straight from the uh, desktop, from uh, from within the code editors and the browser. Um, it will require us to copy and paste our certificate and private key directly inside the HTML and JavaScript files. Um, but this is a popular one uh, for 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 one reason. It's because. certain customers don't have a guaranteed availability of their back end. Um, so if they're in a remote site, they may want all of the signing components to be cached inside the browser so that printing can continue, even if the website in which they're connected to um, suddenly becomes unavailable. It's also the fastest. You're allowing the PC to do the uh, signature generation so all the crypto is happening right on the PC you're not farming that off to the server so a whole bunch of signing requests back to the server aren't going to slow it down um, and uh, it's also popular because it avoids that round robin so each time that you print you have to talk to QZ tray which has to talk to the printer to add an additional uh, trip all the way to the server and back for each print um, can add a small amount of delay and uh, for certain clients they prefer the client side signing through JavaScript. Now that's the good part. Uh, the bad part about doing uh, client side signing through JavaScript is it's not as secure which means that the private key that you're using for signing is available to the browser. So we strongly suggest that you only use client side signing um, if you're in a controlled environment and you know that your users won't be taking that private key uh, directly out of the browser. So please use client side signing through JavaScript uh, with caution. We do have other uh, JavaScript examples we have some for Angular and some for Node.js. Those uh, will not be covered in this tutorial. We'll create another tutorial for those. Um, this is just for the client side. So this is when signing is occurring in the browser. You may know that the branding, you may notice that the branding for QZ is a little bit different in this video. Um, we're using a bleeding edge version of QZ. The signing is the same though. If you're on version 1.9, uh, 2.0, or 2.1, the signing mechanism um, has remained the same for those versions. 1.9, which I strongly recommend you move off of, um, 1.9's uh, JavaScript uh, syntax is a little bit different. So if you are a 1.9 user, you'll have to adapt this tutorial uh, for your needs. 2.0 and 2.1 are identical. Um, obviously, a prerequisite for this is QZ Tray. Um, QZ Tray does require Java. If you're on 2.0, it's Java 7 or higher. If you're 2.1, it's Java 8 or higher. But regardless, we recommend you use Adopt Open JDK 11. We uh, pay for support for uh, Adopt Open JDK, so that is the version that we officially offer our support on, although any of the versions mentioned will work. So we'll be operating out of our demo folder for this tutorial. The demo folder is part of the QZ tray application, but since it's sitting inside program files, it, you can't read and write to it. So we're going to make a copy of it and place it right on our desktop. Notice this menu option I took, Diagnosis, Browse App Folder. In older versions, it'll just be called uh, Open Application Folder, and it'll be somewhere right here. So the folder that we're interested in here is Demo. We're going to make a copy of demo. We're going to place that on our desktop, and that's where we're going to do all of our work from. Sample.html is our main file. If you were to open it up on its own, you'll notice it does work. But what pops up in the in uh, QZ is it says, look right here, it says local host. You don't want to see that. That's our demo certificate, and there's actually no private key for that guy. So that local host, you'll never, ever get working. Um, you want to see your company name there or whatever you used um, when you signed into our portal. 
So assuming that you've already signed into our portal, you'll have a digital certificate and a private key. Private key can come in multiple formats. For JavaScript, we recommend that you use the PEM formatted uh, private key. Now for the community users out there thinking, hey, well, I'm not going to pay for QZ, but I still want to uh, get rid of these pop-ups. Um, you will have to create these files on your own. It's outside of the scope of this tutorial, but the rest of the tutorial should apply just fine for you. All right, digital certificate.txt. This guy here, somehow we got to get inside this page so localhost goes away. The way to do that is to copy and paste the contents of this certificate into that sample file. Now, what you'll notice is in our sample code, it's going to say preferred method from server. Since we're not running Apache or a backend server in this example, we're going to be copying and pasting the certificate text. We're going to be doing the same thing with the private key. We don't rec recommend that you do that in a production environment, but this is a simple JavaScript tutorial from a folder on the desktop. So the copying and pasting that we're doing, you can easily replace with Ajax, Ajax or Fetch. Um, and please do that in your environment. But for the purposes of this tutorial, just to show that the certificate and the private key are working, we're going to be copying and pasting them directly in. So the next file that we want to go into is sample.html. Now this automatically jumped to the set certificate promise function. It's a little bit lower down in the code. Um, you can jump straight to it. This begins certificate. This is our local host certificate. This is what we want to replace. But if you look at digital certificate.txt, it doesn't really look the same. It's missing some of the characters in order to copy and paste it into the HTML file. So the trick that we're going to use to replace that, I really like this trick. Uh, this works in Notepad++, this works in Visual Studio Code, it probably works in some other editors as well. But we're going to use right here, it's called regular expressions. We're going to replace the new line character, which it's the escape character and N, and we're going to replace that with an actual slash N, a double quote, the plus sign, and then a new line and then another double quote. And what this will do is it'll wrap this text so that it can be copy and pasted directly into JavaScript. And as you can see, that quick um, uh, search and replace, all we have to do now is put a double quote at the beginning, a double quote at the end, copy it, and we can paste that right over our localhost certificate. Now again, the preferred method for this is to load it from the server using Ajax. You're more than welcome to do that with the flat file. The example is right here. But since we're working from the local file system, the browser will not allow us to load a file using Ajax. It's a security feature inside the browser. Um, if we were running through Apache, uh, we would be able to use the preferred um, example. But we really like this example because even if you're using another language for your backend like JavaScript or, or I'm sorry, Java or PHP or, uh, or Python, the JavaScript example is a nice baseline. You can get that certificate, you can get that private key, and you can copy and paste them into the right places in sample.html, and then you know if the problem is with, is with your files or uh, if the problem is with your, uh, your actual signing logic. So now if we save this file and refresh it in the browser, we should see that localhost has been replaced with our company name, and it has. QZ PHP demo wants to connect, and that's what we want to see. Unfortunately, we haven't set up signing yet, so if you click anything else, you're going to receive an error message. So to get signing set up in JavaScript, we're going to use a package called JSRSA sign. If you go into the assets folder, signing, you'll find a file called sign message.js. There's a lot of languages here, but sign message.js, and we're going to open that up. And signmessage.js actually has its own private key already pasted in here. This private key won't work. Um, we're going to put our private key inside here. But before we get there, there's a couple of steps that we have to do first. The first is to actually import this module right here, this JavaScript library. This is called JS RSA sign. This adds the crypto capabilities to your browser. So we're going to copy and paste that way, way up in your uh, HTML file. Now this should be obvious to most web developers, but you don't want to keep somebody else's file. 
inside your code, uh, you don't want to trust it from a, uh, a web perspective. You don't know if this link is going to be valid. And a lot of our customers... A lot of our customers actually will copy and paste this line into their code. And then if GitHub has a problem or if the author of JSR say sign decides that he wants to force push to his repository, this link doesn't be, be, becomes broken. So I want to strongly recommend you copy this file locally. I'll even put in to do copy locally so that you do not make this mistake in your production environment. But for proof of concept purposes, it's perfectly safe. So that brings in JSRSA sign, but we still got to bring in our sign message file. So for that, if you look at the path, it's in our demo folder, assets signing. So we're going to assets signing, and it's called sign message.js. Okay, that'll bring in our private key. And just like we formatted our digital certificate, we're going to be repeating that exercise with our private key. So we're going to be doing the same search and replace. If you're wondering why my browser is slightly off the screen, it's because this is a real private key and I want to be a little bit discreet about the value that we're pasting in. Double check our syntax. Looks like we're... Okay, so now our private key has been updated. We're going to save that. And it should be as simple as refreshing our page. Sometimes the browser likes to cache JavaScript files. Most web developers know this. There's ways to force the refresh of that JavaScript file, such as changing the URL. Um, but the fastest way just for development purposes is Control F5. So I'm going to do Control F5 to force the refresh of that JavaScript file. So the certificate comes through fine. That's the first dialog, QZ PHP demo. We're going to click Allow. And now I'm going to try one of these privileged operations, like Find All Printers. And it looks like it's not coming up properly. And what is our reasoning? It says invalid signature. It's missing. Okay. So this is a mistake I make every time when I set up uh, JavaScript signing, which is why I preferred to keep it inside my tutorial. Although we did set up the set certificate promise, There's another function, set signature promise, and signmessage.js has this function declared, but since that gets imported earlier in this HTML file, it gets wiped out by declaring it again. So we're actually going to completely remove set signature promise from sample.html, and now it will use the version that's inside signmessage.js. Hopefully that fixes our issue. We're going to click allow, find all printers. And there we go. QZ PHP demo wants to access connected printers. This is great. At this point, you can click remember this decision, allow. And now anything that you click inside uh, our demo will happen without prompt. And uh, that's really the purpose of licensing. So that concludes our example for JavaScript signing. Um, this is without a backend, so this does not require the uh, configuration of Apache or any backend configuration. It can be done straight from your desktop. Uh, hopefully you found this useful. If you did, please click thumbs up, subscribe to our channel. We're going to be making more videos like this. Um, 
Uh, any comments, please feel free to leave in the comments of the video. You may also post anything on our public mailing list. It's qz.io slash support. And uh, premium customers, reach out to us directly, support at qz.io. We look forward to hearing from you. Thanks again, guys, and uh, stay tuned for more videos.